Hey, Facebook Livers, we are back. Let me go and invite some friends, okay? Let's see, how do I do this? I see we're live again. Hey, Facebook Livers. Let's see how I can add some people. Hey guys, if you know any groups this needs to be posted or shared to, by all means, let's share this information, okay? Bam. All right, I see I got a couple people on with me. Hi, Miss Dickerson. Good afternoon. Hi, Kimberly Reynolds. Thank you guys for joining. Do me a favor, go tell some of your friends to come on in and join with us today. I've got a really cool topic today, uh, it's like, as far as I'm concerned. And today I'm talking about drilling into wood. So I'm gonna wait for a few more people to jump That's my little disclaimer during this particular time. Did y'all get that? Give me some thumbs up about being vigilant. Making sure that other people know that um, there are people that are taking advantage of this time in history and they're, they're going around and, and posing themselves and positioning themselves, saying that they're from some type of health organization and that they're doing testing for Corona. It's not true. Don't let someone come to your door, tell you that, that sneaky, tricky lie. Um, so be vigilant about your safety and the safety of your families during this time. Okay, I wanna give another big old shout out while we are getting ready for things to uh, take place and for people to join in. I keep telling you guys that I model for Duluth Trading Company. So this is their latest catalog. And while no, that is not me, it is a beautiful brown skin girl on the cover.
going to go on and invite her to the Let's see, get, get a kind of join in this Facebook party. And I'm hoping that they're able to find me. Mark Joseph, I see that you're texting me. Um, I'm hoping that you're able to find your way in under Tammy Gam. Hopefully that's you popping in. If so, give me a wave or something. Let me know you're here. All right, so without further ado, I've got to get started. So what I'm going to talk about today is drilling into wood. Just drilling it. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. Just drilling into wood. I'm gonna go over five points when it comes to drilling into wood, all right? So, of course, I've brought along a couple of extra handy dandy friends. I brought my drills with me today. You know, guys, I love these things. All right, so today you see I have two drills right here. drill bits I've done that on purpose because with because they don't perform equally and so that's something that you need to know when you're going to begin on your woodworking projects okay I'm speaking specifically about drilling into wood today now there are so many uh, materials that you can drill into you can drill into wood you can drill into metal you can drill into plastic there are so many different types of woods that you can drill into you can drill into soft woods which are called corniferous woods. You can draw, drill into hardwoods, which are called deciduous. It easier so I wanted to give you that a little tidbit of information all right so now when you're drilling into the wood there's a couple things you may want to do as precursors for drilling into the wood especially when you're getting started and you really don't know exactly what you're doing first thing I'm going to talk to you about is called punching no we're not using our wood as a punching bag we're using a hole punch now Somewhere, somewhere in this grand, um, Take your set nail and you can punch a hole just like that. What that does is it gives the top of the drill bit a nice firm place to get started when you're drilling a hole. That way there's not a mistake of you running around your material with your drill as you get started. All right, same thing works when you're using an impact drill. If you use the, the hole punch, you're able to just go right on into the hole, all right? Other than starting it up and running around. 
You see that? Now, mind you, I'm not holding this at a 90 degree angle. I'm doing that on purpose because many people begin to drill a hole and they're like, I'm gonna drill this hole and then they straighten it out. It happens. It's part of the learning process. You always want to position yourself so that you have a 90 degree angle between your surface of your wood and your, and your project if you want your screw to go in straight. There are reasons that people want the screws to go in at an angle, but like I said, that's a whole nother lesson. All right, so you guys. is actually pretty soft so there we have it it drills straight in nice and easy thanks Kenneth Patterson for joining in I see my classmates Tara uh, Lisa and Charles thank you guys for coming today all right so now you understand what it is to do a punch that wasn't so bad was it Okay, next thing I wanna to talk to you about, which is something that I see commonly happen when a person is new to using a drill, is they, they tend to like to use the reverse, okay? So what they'll do is they'll drill a hole in, they'll stop their drill action, and they'll switch the reverse button to drill it out. Guess what, guys? It's an extra step it actually causes more wear and tear on the motor of your drill. Now, you know, all of it's relative. How long or how fast is it gonna wear out? I can't say, that's not my specialty. But when it comes to being a professional with your tools, you wanna do, or it comes to being an amateur with your tools, you wanna do things as professionally as possible because that saves you time on your projects. So I'm gonna drill four holes, ready? I'm gonna go in, out, and switch the gears, ready? In. Oops, I'm not going to reverse. Oh. In, switch gears out. 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 All right, you see how much time that took? Now watch what happens when I don't switch gears, when I just go in. All right, I'm positioning it so that I'm just... It's called swarf. So that's what's pulled out when you pull back and forth, all right? All you have to do is one direction in, one direction out. Now here's something else that happens typically. People will say, well, my drill bit doesn't go in very easily. Check your direction. Remember that? Remember your direction right there? Okay, right now the, the drill is in the direction of reverse and I am specifically and purposely going to try to drill with it in reverse and let's see what happens. I'm applying pressure and it is going in, but guess what? It's only going in a little bit. That's really not what you wanna do because drills are directional. They're set up so that they begin to tear away the material and back them out. So therefore you wanna make sure that your drill is in the proper direction for going in when you're drilling. So you may ask yourself, well, why would it even have a reverse button if I'm just simply going in? Guess what? That's the other lesson when it comes to backing out screws. So we'll get to that in just a bit. So we've talked about the punch. We've talked about <clears throat> reverse. Let's talk about a concept called pre-drilling. Why is pre-drilling even necessary or important? Anybody know? Why in the world would you wanna put a hole into a material before actually just going on and grabbing a screw, picking up, up and going? Well, I'll show you why. All right, I've brought a piece of plywood with me okay typically it's pretty easy for me to split a piece of plywood so I'm gonna try it right now hopefully it works today 
for me showing you how to split this piece of plywood. Let's say for instance, you're drilling into a piece of plywood, all right? And for today, I've chosen a T25 decking screw, okay? That I think this one is about two and a half inches long, all right? And you see the head for the T25, okay? It's a different type of drill bit head, all right? It's not, it's, I did not choose one that goes on a Phillips and I didn't choose one that goes on a square. So what I'm gonna attempt to do is just drill this straight into this piece of wood close to the edge and hopefully it will split. Let me see, let me get a brand new one because that one's been used before. So you see that I'm approximately a half of an inch away from the edge of the wood and I'm going to try to split the wood. You know what I don't want to do? I don't want to drill into my table, so I'm going to double this up because I don't have enough uh, distance. Ah, I did not exactly crack it, but I did damage the wood itself. You see that? Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. Yes, I was able to create damage. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get one of these wood sticks. And I'm going to drill into the edge of this too, okay? Just to see if I can create what I want to. Now, mind you, this piece is not an engineered piece of lumber that has had, that has had um, several layers glued to it. So I'm going to drill into this and I'm going to try to break it, okay, on purpose. Can y'all see it? Once again, I'm setting up approximately half of an inch away from the edge. And my attempt is going to be to crack this piece of wood. Ah, yes, it worked. I cracked it. Did y'all see that happen? Oh, I'm so excited because I cracked the piece of wood. You see that? Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to have happen. Now that happens because the shank of the screw has a particular... Give me a second, I'm gonna cut it off. All right, I got my saw out. I'm gonna switch this battery because what I wanna do is I wanna cut that little piece off so I can still use this same piece of wood. Do a quick cut. Cut off what I don't need. Let me go back to my work. I love having my tools ready and available. Y'all just do not understand. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pre-drill a hole. See, now I cut the part off that had the split in it. There's the piece that had the split. So it just breaks it right on off. I cut past there. You see, it just broke up. <whistles> Broken. I'm so sorry today. I just broke my wood. Ah! <laughs> Y'all know I'm a kid at heart. All right, so I'm gonna pre-drill a hole on this and then I'm gonna put the screw in. So watch this. I'm gonna use my impact driver this time. It's just because it's my preference. See, pre-drilled hole, no cracking.
person that is an experienced woodworker and you don't want to split your wood, go on and pre-drill your holes. Pretty important stuff to know about. All right. Next thing I want to talk to you about is when it comes to uh, making sure that you're doing a project that has really, really nice finish work on it. Remember how I drilled this and then it split? So I'm going to use the opposite end of it, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of tape on the front side and the back side of this particular piece of wood. Now, typically when someone is using a piece of engineered lumber, like a piece of plywood, it's because it's something that's gonna be seen in the home, like a cabinet, a mantle, um, let's see, what else could be seen in the home? A dresser, things of that nature. So a lot of times this is what is used for that. And you do not want to have to have your wood split because it makes it for an unprofessional, very amateur looking finish. So if you want to make sure that you're, you're doing this properly and you want it to one or both sides of your wood with a larger drill bit. So I'll pop this out right here. I'll pop this one in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna suspend this piece of plywood. See, it's not damaged. I'm gonna suspend this piece of plywood over these two pieces of wood, all right? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill in and out with this half inch drill bit and it's gonna create damage on purpose. Look what I did. You see the damage I created on the back side? Part of the reason I created damage on the back side was because the speed in which I was drilling and the fact that there was nothing on the back side of this wood to protect it and keep those fibers of wood from splitting and tearing. So now I'm gonna do it again, but I'm gonna use the, the wood protect, a piece of wood to protect the back side and watch what a difference it'll make. and the second hole. You see that? Ta -da, ta -da. All right. Now, last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the speed in which you drill into wood. Here's the thing about wood. Wood is a fibrous product, okay? Meaning that there are fibers and strands that interlock with one another in order to create the wood because the wood is actually, you know, from a living organism. So it has strands just like we have muscles inside of our body.
the bath so I can mess it up on the back end. And I'm controlling the speed by how fast I'm pushing the trigger. Hey, my trash is Brown Jones. That's one of my students. Hey, sweetie pie. La, 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 la. Oh, great. That's exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to split the wood. You see how much I tore it up by going slowly? I meant to do that. I did that on purpose because drilling slowly actually tears your fibers a whole lot more than if you're going faster. See, that was the faster one. And that was the much slower one. It tears your fibers up on your wood. All right? So I think we've been on here about 25 or 30 minutes already. Can you guys believe how fast the time goes around here when we're talking about woodworking and construction things? So I've got more tips and tricks specific to the drill that I will work on tomorrow and the next day. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm just dedicating to being able to use the drill. I want to give two huge, 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 huge shout outs today. Yesterday, because of our episode, Ridge. YouTube channel. There's a lot of content there. When you get there, I want you to like, I want you to subscribe, and I want you to share the content. You could also find me on, uh, let's see, you find me here on my Facebook. I've got like two or three Facebook profiles that go to different groups. So right here now, I'm on Tammy Gam. I've got a Tammy Gamble profile and a uh, girly shop teacher profile. But make sure that you follow me on Facebook.